I'd like to show you a little operation of uh, the making of a balance that we use in the uh, lab here. It's a device called a triple beam balance. Uh, I'm going to show you how simple it is to make one that is similar to the ones that we have in the lab. Uh, I have a meter stick here. It's 100 centimeters long. And if I take it and put my finger in the 50 meter, uh, centimeter mark, almost, I can get the piece of wood to balance pretty well. And what I've done is taken an old meter stick that we've had, and I drilled a hole at the 50 centimeter mark. Let me bring this up so you can see. There's a hole right in here, and with that hole, I was able to put a little device that can swivel. Now, it's pretty evenly set, but I'd like to see what happens if I put some things on it. It's working as a simple lever. You put something on one side, you counterbalance it with something on the opposite side. So what I did is I took a couple of little pieces of paper, or actually cardboard, and cut them. And I'm going to use them, I'll hang them on here, on the uh, meter stick to see if the little bit of mass that these have will affect the position of the, the meter stick. So I'll start pretty close to the center here and see if this does anything. Well, here's my center point. Here's the piece of paper. Not much has moved. There's a lot of internal friction with this. This doesn't turn real freely. So let me take a couple more. The next one I'm going to put out towards the end of the piece of wood. Ah, so my lever balancing in the middle point here, what we call the fulcrum, has uh, become offset because I put a little piece of cardboard way out towards the end. So in other words, if I move this further out on the uh, meter stick, it will offset uh, the, the equilibrium. Uh, there's a force that's pulling this down, and it's like a playground seesaw. You could sit towards the middle and not have much of an effect, but if you put somebody out on the end of the, uh, the uh, seesaw, that can really affect how the, the motion of the lever works. Now, let me bring that off. Let me put this back. We'll try to get it even again. Let me take this one off. So I can move my masses from distances uh, away from the center. Uh, these are pretty much uniform masses, and that can affect the balance of the piece of wood. Starting to move already. So here's a pretty sensitive beam balance moving around the fulcrum point, the, the point at the center here. That's the operation to the triple beam balances that we have in the lab. So I'm going to move this out of the way and show you uh, how to use the triple beam balance and how it works. So let me pause the video here. Now I'd like to shift focus and talk about the triple beam balance. We're going to be using the triple beam balance and we're also going to use the electric scales to do our massing for the things we do in the lab. Uh, looking at this, I have a lever that goes across and then I have a point where it pivots, that's the fulcrum. So if I push down on one side or the other, it'll uh, move back and forth across that uh, fulcrum position. Uh, we have a device that works just like the, the uh, playground seesaw or like the lever I just showed you. Um, I have a system of counterweights that are sitting right here and I can move those to different positions along the beams that are on the top here. Over on your left, there is a little hook, and hanging down from that hook is a little pan. The pan is made of metal. It's an integral part of the balance, so I don't take it off. I use it uh, on the balance all the time. It's a piece of uh, metal that's already been pre-weighed. Now, if I don't have anything on the balance at all, 
it should be pointing very close to the zero mark on the the uh, right hand side over here and that tells me that the, the uh, balance is even. If I take an object and put it on the pan, that object will have a little force working on it from gravity on this side and so it should shift my beam and make this side go up. So let's try. It's a simple cork and right away the beam on this side shifts up. So what I'll now try to do is I'm going to try to counterbalance it. In the back here I have a counterpoise or a weight that is registered to be a hundred. So I'll shift this over to the hundred position. There's a little groove or a notch in here and you might be able to hear me moving the poise across that notch and it makes a clicking noise. Well I did that and it's what much too heavy. So I'll go back and I'll next use the next counterweight that's also too heavy. Let me go back. We'll try another counterweight. This one the notches aren't so pronounced. Okay, we're getting close. So let's move this one across a little further. Let's move back. Okay, this is now showing in the little window. The position is listed as five. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. Yeah, you can make it out. But the device is not showing it balanced yet. So now I use the last poise, the last counterweight, which just slides across the front here. And this is registering in tenths of a gram. I'll slide it across, see if it's close. Not bad. I'll back up a little bit, see if it gets even. Not quite yet. It's coming closer. So my beam is pointing at the zero mark, and this now tells me that the mass is a combination of where these positions on the counterweights are located. So I'll bring that up close so you can see what I got. On the back counterweight, I've got a five. On the front one, I've got a point three and three tiny lines over. So I would add these numbers up to give my total mass and this would read as 5.33 grams. So it's a very uh, precise device. It can weigh to a hundredth of a gram, and that's pretty much uh, the kind of accuracy that we need for our, our lab here. Uh, if I take the cork off, then the weights on this side are too heavy. If I put the cork back on, it should readjust and come back to zero. So that tells me I've gotten a good mass. Now, let me stop here real quick and uh, show you another type of balance that we have. The second type of triple beam balance that we have is one that has a much higher capacity, can take heavier masses and give us good uh, readings on those. Uh, I'll bring it up a little closer for you. It works the same way. There's a pivot system in the middle. There's a pan, and then there's counterweights that move across the beams to indicate how heavy something would be. If I have an object that is so heavy that the triple beam balance I first showed you can't hold it and get it balanced, then I have to, sh to switch over to this type of balance. This has a higher uh, ability, uh, this has the ability to take higher masses, but it works the same way. If I put an object on the other side over there and counterbalance it with the, the, uh, the counterweights, uh, it'll work the same. Here's my wallet. I'll put that on. Not that it's beyond the capacity of the balance, but it's a heavy, heavier object. Let me try the big heavy weight. Move that over to 100. Not quite enough. I'll move it to 200. Too much. I'll go back. That was registering 100 grams. Let me go to the back counterweight. This is in tenths of a gram. So here's 40. There's 60. Let me go back to 50. No, let me go back to 40. When you're operating this type of any type of balance like this, you have to experiment a little bit and try to get the uh, counterweights to be in the groove uh, and. You'll have to move them back and forth again until they get even. Now, let me move the front 
counterweight. That one slides just like the other. And we're getting close. And a little bit too heavy. Go back up. And once the pointer is registered at zero, then I'll know the mass. And it's pretty close. Now, let me take my wallet off and let me bring the balance over to you to see what my weight is. The big heavy counterweight is pointing at 100. The back counterweight is registering in tens of a gram, 10 grams, so that's at 40. And my front counterweight is registering 7 and one line over, so 7.1. So my total would be 147.1 grams for the wallet. And of course, if I uh, spend a lot of money and use up some of the bills that are in here, like more than the 25 bucks I have in it, then the, the wallet would get lighter. Or if you would give me some money, uh, I could get it to be a little heavier. Now, I'm going to stop here and show you one more piece of inf information about the triple beam balance. So I'm back using the first triple beam balance I showed you, uh, the one that I did uh, used with uh, the cork, getting the mass of that. Uh, Everything is going to be in grams. The force pulling on this side matched the force pulling on the cork, so they got even. Now, this is a solid object, one thing, I can place it right on the metal pan. But what if I have crystals, or flour, or something that's granular and small? Well, to weigh something like that, what I'll do is I'll take a little tiny plastic pan. They're very thin, very light. I'll place that on the balance. It has mass, so I'll have to counterbalance a little bit with the, the weights that are here. I'll try to get it to be zero. And we're getting close. It's going to be two point something. Okay, we're very close to even right here. And I'm going to move this just a tiny bit more to get it to point to zero. And um, that's the weight of my pan. If I were to read this one, I'll bring it up again so you can see. My piece of, uh, my plastic pan weighs 2.28 grams. I add those up together. Now, if I wanted to weigh something that's granular or small objects, uh, rather than have them go right directly on the pan and maybe mess up the pan, uh, I will put them in the, uh, the plastic weighing pan. Then I'll get its weight. And then what am I going to do with the pan's weight? I will subtract it away from my big total number that I get. So I have some little red spheres here. I'm going to dump some of them in. Right away, my balance shifted because of the weight increasing over here. So I'll counterbalance that. I'll move these counterweights a little too much. Okay, let me go back. That was a 10. I mean, I'm going to move the big one to 10. Well, it's pretty close to 9 point something and 10. So let me move this to nine and move with, move this one all the way up towards nine. Oh, now we're getting close. All right, we're almost there. So my pan with the beads in it is registering a new mass, which is the combined mass of the pan plus the beads. Uh, if I just want the beads, I'll have to subtract the weight of the pan, 2.28 uh, uh, grams that we had. So my reading on the balance now is 9. Let me get that steady for you. 9.72. And I would take and subtract 2.28 from that. 
and that would give me the weight of just the beads themselves that I have sitting in the pan. So it's a, just a simple uh, description of how I can use the balance. It's very helpful. Uh, anytime we have to weigh, weigh something in the lab, we'll use, we sometimes will use these, but we'll also use the electric scale. And that uh, concludes what I wanted to say for you. Bye-bye.